Welcome to Shit Island, the podcast where all proceeds go to the Tobacco and Coal Energy Super Pack. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Hey, everyone. I do love me some tobacco. And coal. Yeah. <laughs> How are all my bros out there? What's up, bros? bros up? Give yeah. it up, bros. Yeah, give us all the bro fist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, Dan, that's, that's probably trademarked. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if you trademarked uh, Yeah, no, don't, don't, don't give us that. Budweiser owns the trademark for a bro fist. No, PewDiePie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, God, we're going to get to <laughs> We're gonna get super PewDiePie now. Oh, that would probably massively boost our ratings, though. Probably, yeah. Yeah, fuck. Oh, no, give us a bro fist. Come on, girls get sued <laughs> by uh, PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, we have to come out strong of the gates. This is the bro episode where we talk about <laughs> sexism and yeah, fuck yeah, bro socialism. The episode all about the bros uh, yeah. um, and how cool it is to be a bro with your bros. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so crack a cold one, and uh, uh, I don't know. What do you do when you're a bro? You're like, um, you wear shades indoors. Yeah, yeah. You, nope. you wear shades, and you, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> you know, it's midnight. You're on the train, still wearing your shades. Yeah, you're just that cool. You hang out with other bros. You pre- you pretty much only have m- male friends. Uh, you really don't uh, regard uh, women as people. More of like, uh, uh, I guess, like goals to be achieved, uh, and mm-hmm. then compare like achievements in video games, and then you uh, compare them with your other bros. You know, I slept with this one. Did you get this one yet? Like Pokemon trading cards, really. And in your free time, you watch these incredibly brave and cool guys in the men's rights activist <laughs> movement who dare to talk about how women hold you back from playing video games eighteen hours a day. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought you were about to say you watch uh, these, like, dating... Uh, not dating tips, but, like, pickup artist tips videos and stuff. Like, fucking... Those are great, Super too. seducer and that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, God, super seducer. Fucking <laughs> hell. Uh, wait, that wasn't that made hilarious. by one of these fucking Scandinavian types? Uh, I don't know. Oh, God. Well, if so, you two are going to have to apologize. <laughs> I apologize, <laughs> even if... He's not Scandinavian. Ah, <laughs> uh, fair enough. I'm sure the golden one has made some great videos about how to pick up women. <laughs> um, I'm sure he has. And step one, look like him. <laughs> <laughs> step two, don't act like him. Yeah. Step three, just physically pick them up. You got the muscle for it. <laughs> <laughs> step four, uh, run from the police, because that's illegal. Yeah, that, that's not... We don't endorse that as shit items. <laughs> We endorse Just tobacco and coal <laughs> energy, but not picking exactly. up women physically with your muscly arms. Indeed. Unless they you now want that explicitly, then all right, fine. Get, you know... Make sure first, though. Make sure first. Yeah, get written. Don't assume. Written or verbal consent. Indeed. Or both. But also, like, tobacco and coal are, like, ethical businesses. So, yeah, that they, yeah. Are, that they are. They are. So, so we, we fully endorse those wonderful companies that bring us tobacco and or coal. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Or coal in a, a cigar form. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just, I like to think that, they, that they're all owned by the same company that deals <laughs> with both tobacco and coal at the same time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's the same super pack. you got to diversify your portfolio, you know? Yeah. Marco Rubio 2020. <laughs> 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 It's just, it's just one giant corporation that invests in everything that is going to be um, disappearing in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. The incredibly short-sighted lobby. Yeah. The, you know, Blockbuster and VHS <laughs> and DVDs. God, I, I wish Blockbuster had, had gone on because they thought wisely in the, in the 90s to invest in coal and, <laughs> and tobacco and guns. <laughs> We'd all be renting our coal from Blockbuster. Today. <laughs> oh, what a world that would be. That would be world. hilarious. That'd that be would great. be great. You rent your cigars or cigarettes? Yeah, you rent, you rent them. Yeah. <laughs> you have to give them back. Yeah, I'll just rent a cigar, you know. You go onto the website and click you want delivery of a, another pack of cigarettes and it comes within a day. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah. The topic for today. Oh, yes, the topic. <laughs> Bro, brocialism. Yes, brocialism. And or manarchism, which was kind it's of an also afterthought. A thing. But yeah, we realized that was also a thing. Another word that people use to describe basically the same thing. I prefer bro- brocialism, though, because 
I know there's a thing like minarchism, so I keep thinking of yeah, manarchism, it's like the verse of that. So it's like, yeah, it's not a good word. No, brochurism, that's where it's at. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if it isn't incredibly obvious to everyone, a, a brochialist and brochialism is a portmanteau of a bro and socialism, right? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't a think bro I get it yet. It's short for brother. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, just... a brother is often used as a term of affection. <laughs> And socialism, well, that's a society in which the memes are production. <laughs> Often related to the writings of Karl Marx. Karl Marx was the ultimate pro. What is a brother, mm. Azure? <laughs> well, you should do a, a brother101.com. <laughs> yes. Brochialism101.com. Oh, yeah. Do oh, it. do it, do it. I should do that for next year's April Fools. I oh, should. Although that would be wonderful. I just revealed it now, so maybe I won't. Uh, well, Everyone good. will have forgotten by then. Do it for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. For when everyone LARPs? Is, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, the, sure. Wearing the costume of socialism, but under the veneer of, of brochialism? Yeah, mm. just wear like a Karl Marx cosplay while holding up like a few Davis or Rini books, you know? Mm. Yeah. That works. Uh, so. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> brochialism. <laughs> Well, how many? We we should everyone. Every time we say brochialism, take a shot. Oh yeah, boy! At this point. All right, well, uh, let's drinking get to game. Pouring. That's yeah. a very bro okay. thing to do. Is take a shot. Take a shot. Do yeah. it. Uh, a spring break. Spring break's coming up. <laughs> spring break. Uh, so brochialism is. I mean, it's usually uh, used as a pejorative term to describe a person more so than any... It's not a movement. It's not a political movement. It's often not something that someone does consciously. Rather, um, it's someone who is a socialist or a self-described socialist, but on the social side of thing, they are still quite reactionary, uh, conservative. Most often this is about uh, women and sexism, but I think a brochialist can also just be someone who likes... Uh, doesn't like gay people or trans people or... Right. Just generally speaking, you're not socially uh, left-wing. Uh, you're not woke. Yeah. <laughs> You're not woke exactly, and 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 we were just talking about how it's it's something that's been around in leftist circles for the longest time, and and in general in politics for the longest time. But it's it's something that had somewhat of a a, a mainstream appeal after the or during the primaries that the Democrats held in 2015 and 2016, when the term Bernie Bros. Uh, came to be through writers such as um, Moira Donegan, who is a, a writer who writes a lot of feminist literature and started the, the, the group Shitty Media Men, where she detailed sexual harassment going on in, in journalism and in news corporations, and that eventually leaked to the public. And a lot of these uh, uh, terrible people were um, were let go from, from their jobs. And she she's still active for The Guardian and is one of the people that, for better or worse, are portraying men, especially in the democratic race, negatively and is currently promoting Elizabeth Warren uh, a lot in The Guardian and in, in mm. other magazines and book forums. Um, and she infamously wrote an article uh, called Why Vote for Sanders when you can have Elizabeth Warren instead, which a lot of socialists and, and social democrats have criticized because elizabeth warren is seen more as a, an opportunist or like a neoliberal wearing the colors of bernie sanders whereas bernie sanders has actually been left wing since the 70s or 60s even yeah um so yeah i wouldn't necessarily agree with that characterization of uh, elizabeth warren but i would say that they do have different politics now with bernie being further left Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's also a, a thing of sincerity in it, I think, is when you have Bernie, you know he believes what he's talking about, but you don't know how sincere someone like Elizabeth Warren is or how much she's going to fight for the ideals that, that she's running on right now um, and what Medicare for All, for example, even means. Like, what is, what, what's the, is it all just talking points or is it actually uh, something that, you can, that you're going to fight for once you're elected yeah. uh, to actually get passed? Um, but that's yeah. That that might be a different topic, but, different but still, topic, it, it yeah. deals with. Yeah, it deals with the. Um, it it deals with this, this 
uh, cultural movement in on the left in the U.S. where a lot of women don't feel safe in in leftist circles because of men who who are um, uh, dominating or who who don't respect or sexually harass even um, women who are in the same party. There was this case of of Bernie Sanders, some interns working for Bernie Sanders, sexually harassing some women that uh, Bernie has had to deal with since since that took place uh, in the 2016 election. And I think I think what we're seeing is the media right now trying to dunk on Bernie by giving him these questions about women as if they're like yeah. uh, like he's he's soft on women or something. But I mean, it's playing into Bernie's hands because he is repeatedly apologized for it and he he didn't have anything to do with it personally and he fired the people that were responsible. So he he deals with those questions like a champ. He doesn't blink when he gets those questions. So I think it's just a matter of time before they kind of let go on those questions from the media side. I'm looking forward to that time. Yeah. We talked about that briefly during our Democratic nominee live stream thingy. Oh, yeah. When, uh, I can't remember what question it was that he got, but I think, Peter, you said something like, this is a question that Bernie's getting because they want to, like, catch him in the act or, like, do a gotcha or something. I can't remember what what the question it was. Was something to do with women or feminism? Yeah. Well, to be fair, those questions were incoherent as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anyone you know has watched that stream, those questions did not have any logical connection between the premise and the eventual question. Yeah, it was a yeah. mess. They were a little rambly, but at the same time, I, I have sympathy for them because they, they, the people who asked the questions were actual activists. So they were actually out doing uh, uh, you know, relative good in the world, uh, yeah. as opposed to a lot of the candidates they were asking questions to. And a lot of candidates, <laughs> I feel like, didn't deserve the questions they got. Yes. And they were just, they <laughs> didn't answer any of them. So, uh, yeah, but, but yeah, I felt like all the questions talking about that forum, which is still available on Asher's uh, YouTube account, it, I felt like all the questions, you go back and watch it, were about women. I could be wrong, but they were all more or less about women's issues, like reproductive health and just these general women's issues that Bernie has never really faltered on or ever yeah. like uh, uh, wavered on. It's just, I think the media has this idea that he's anti-women because of the way uh, writers like uh, Maura Donegan and others have portrayed him in the media yeah. um, to, to, to sort of try to, to label him as the misogynist candidate. It does, uh, to me, it, it's probably just because uh, they remind me so much of each other, but it reminds, uh, it echoes the um, the media in the UK trying and basically succeeding to label Jeremy Corbyn as an anti-Semite. Right, yeah. Uh, even though, like, the examples that they're, they keep repeating are pretty lame, like, not gotchas at all. Uh, like, the one, I think the one that they use the most is he was, like, at a funeral for the victims of a terrorist attack uh, or it's victims of something, I can't remember the details now, but he was like there and then also at the same place where some guys who were connected with Hamas and then that's like, aha, anti-Semite, you hate Jews. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's about the extent of, of those allegations basically, um, yeah. being and I true. Feel like because it, it's, it's the same with Bernie being a sexist or somehow against women's rights or whatever. No, he's yeah, had a really good record on women's rights. So. He does, yeah. And Jeremy yeah. Corbyn has a stellar record since you know the seventies on being against all forms of racism, including being against anti-Semitism. Yeah, and ironically, I can't remember if it was before the actual election or after, but it came out that the Hillary campaign had also had cases of sexual harassment, but she didn't actually fire the people that were accused of sexual harassment. She just moved them around to a different department. Yeah. So she was actually more accepting of it than, than Bernie had been when he was a nominee, um, mm. which is telling about yeah. her character. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think mm. I think there was just this enthusiasm about Hillary as a, a woman candidate. Mm-hmm. And I think there's still this enthusiasm about, I mean, I think it's a great development that so many women are running for president because you know, that's, I mean, that's something that should have been standard from, from the beginning that there is this window for women to participate in politics. 
But in the U.S., that's definitely not always been the case. And even today, there's still a, a big disparity. Um, there's there's a big difference in how many women and how many men are uh, represented in Congress and in Senate and in local politics too. Yeah. So it's it's a good development that women are are finally participating in politics in the U.S. too. But mm-hmm. there there does seem to be this this ulterior side of like we mentioned, not you know, or or too zealously attacking men as well and painting men as these um, people who are obsolete now and 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 should have to to get out of the way. <laughs> and and they've yeah. uh, journalists have literally asked Bernie that question pointedly, like there's so many women running. Why are you running? You are a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's had to come up with a stock answer, which is basically like, uh, I think we should let the voters decide if it's time for me to move aside. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's it's an interesting time right now in the Democratic Party for what you know qualifies you to be running for president. If you ask a lot yeah. of liberal feminists, it's definitely that you're a woman. Like That has to be one of the checkboxes now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's I, completely I, ignoring any other like politics these people might have. It's very annoying. Yeah. Particularly last, like, uh, in 2016, because that's, man, fucking hell, <laughs> Hillary's politics was Bernie's politics. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, I, uh, on the other hand, I do get it, because trying to think back on all those times I've been on Wikipedia and scrolled through all of the American elections, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure Hillary Clinton was the first uh, female nominee like of one of the two big parties she was yeah so, she was yeah. the first female nominee for president yeah and yeah. she sure fucked it up and that's what like 250 years after the united states became a country i mean it's like. telling it's telling about the, sy- the systemic uh problems in the u.s that has kept women out of politics for so long and also in europe because it was a wave in the beginning of the 1900s that women were allowed to vote yeah. at all. And it took a lot of trouble and a lot of uh, fighting for women to be allowed to, to vote. Whereas uh, if we look to the Soviet Union, for instance, they were at the forefront of, of women's rights when it came to participation in, in the work life and in politics. Yeah. Actually, one of the first general secretaries of the Communist Party was a woman. Hmm. Yeah. And one of the first ministers too, right? Yeah. A political minister. Yeah. Uh, Secretaries. Anyway, of something, <laughs> education Fuck, maybe. I, I can't right. remember. Right, uh, I, I was just reminded that Sweden has actually never had a female prime minister. Hmm. All right. Well, and, uh, well um, hashtag to uh, cancel Sweden. <laughs> yeah, hashtag yeah. cancel Sweden. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we, we only came, had our we first one eight years close ago. To having one named Mona Salin, but she was in, and this sounds very stupid to say because it was a very stupid thing. Uh, but she was in something referred to as the Twix scandal. Where, okay. Um, what? Uh, Twix as in the chocolate bar? Yes. Uh, so what the fuck she, happened she that was, that's um, a scandal? She was at a gas station with, uh, with her th- kids, I think, and she, was, she bought uh, a Twix chocolate bar, and she accidentally used the wrong credit card. She used a credit card that was like linked to the treasury of the you know nation of sweden which she had on her i uh, anyway uh and so when she realized she obviously paid the money back to the account and uh, you know she you know she didn't actually take any money from there it, it was like half a dollar or whatever um but yeah that that was a scandal and that, then she that, had to that was a sc- step down. what that was the scandal, yeah. She had to step down. She bought a, a Twix with the, the wrong credit card. What? Yep. And then... Sweden's weird. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that fuck? was like the... That was like the height of controversy at the time. Remember, this was mm. before the Sweden Democrats and the immigration thing. Anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, if we're going to talk about patriarchy and men excluding women i mean there's no getting around the the marxist circles too because i feel like oh, in, yeah. in politics in politics marxism is famous and infamous for the exclusion of women causing 
them to to split with Marxism altogether. The most famous example probably being Judith Butler. Yeah, I was about to and, you know, uh, ask uh, you to bring up that uh, <laughs> the whole feminist. Which wave was that? Third wave. Second wave, I think. Second, Second wave. wave. Well, you yeah, know, especially. Tell us about it, Peter. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's. Hmm. It's a. Uh, <laughs> That's. Uh, it's a, it's a long story, but. Um, basically, a lot of feminist writers in the 70s and 60s, uh, covering all ends of the political spectrum, really, started out analyzing society following the Marxian framework and did a lot of analysis and felt that the Soviet Union and socialism in Europe and in America and, and all around the world, Africa, didn't address the needs of the systemic oppression of women and, and the, the needs of, of women in general. So um, it's, it, it kind of, it started out as a, an internal strife, be, uh, internal strife between the, what would become the feminist writers and, um, and, and philosophers and Marxians and Marxists. And Marxians and Marxists basically didn't have or felt that, it, they felt it, it, it was bourgeois ideology and theory to, to deal with, with this as a separate issue as opposed to a more structural issue that you would deal with after a revolution. Mm. So you had people like Judith Butler and others who, I don't believe Judith Butler ever came out and identified as a Marxist, but they followed along from the sidelines and saw how there wasn't any room for women within Marxism because it was all what we today call class reductionist politics, where it all became about class instead of talking about social issues, yeah. basically, and, and undermining social issues to only talk about class. So we had a whole generation of feminist writers who were or felt pushed out of Marxism because uh, basically the people didn't want to talk about women's rights within Marxism, which is a shame and which is a core element of Marxism or should be at the very least. Um, basically, the, the only thing, um, like old Marxism of that time of the 20th century, um, really all of the 20th century, um, Marxists and Marxist feminists, their answer to feminism and to the question of, well, what are we going to do about the patriarchy and about sexism in society, uh, was basically that, well, you know, Marx tells us that once we have communism, men and women will be, you know, free and equal to be able to live, uh, you know, in harmony or whatever. And right. So all we need to do is achieve communism. Like we need to overthrow capitalism, and then, and then that'll be good, won't it? Without actually. I mean, that was the. Uh, yeah. That was the response at the time. Yeah, especially uh, in the '60s and '70s. I think a lot of fem without knowing exactly, I think a lot of feminists felt that the Soviet Union was falling behind on the issue at the time. Yeah. And wasn't pushing it as much as it used to or outwardly talking about it as much as it used to, and we're more focusing on the rights of minorities at the time uh, yeah. to kind of talk up Europe or to appeal to America and Europe and the minorities there. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the USSR is, is funny. Definitely post, post-Stalin post era, the USSR is funny. Um, they did talk a lot about minorities and about, you know, uh, ethnic... Minor ethnic minorities and um, and about the rights and equality uh, for nationalities, and that came about because of the civil rights movement in the U.S. and uh, you know the U the USSR. It's actually the origin of the phrase uh, or the term "whataboutism," which is used to describe uh, basically a way in which the Soviet Union would deflect criticism is they would say, well, and, you know, yes, you say we have, uh, you know, this and this in the USSR, but what about the USA where they have lynchings of uh, black people and black people can't vote and all of these nasty things. Um, right. And, and basically because it was so effective, uh, because people were constantly comparing the US and the USSR, the USSR spearheaded uh, you know, equality campaigns and uh, f 
uh, they had lots of propaganda about, uh, you know, African comrades and, uh, you know, we're all equals in the Soviet Union and race doesn't divide us and we're not like the racist USA. And uh, and I suppose when they did that, they kind of abandoned the whole feminism thing. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. And that that is that is more or less what happened. And also the feminists saw that apparently there was room that you know they were kind of dismissed as uh, as bourgeois the, uh, theoretic uh, uh, philosophers but there apparently was room for critical theory and uh, the frankfurt school which you know to them must have seemed incredibly trivial that they were just analyzing jazz music and movies <laughs> and, and music uh, in fuck general jazz am i right yeah, but women's rights? Nah, that's that's we'll deal with that after the, rev- yeah, <laughs> the come revolution. Yeah, on, come on, but... the jazz. That's the real issue here. That's the... yeah. Come women on, take how, a... how are you women not getting this? It's the jazz. Take a back seat, women. I mean, <laughs> it's jazz. We have to talk about how bad jazz is. But yeah. you know, women's issues? Nah, not so much. Yeah, uh, yeah, dear listener, if you hate jazz as well, please send us an email. <laughs> um, and I think today, if. Um, if you join, you know, these um, minority parties like Marxist-Leninist parties or whatever you have in your country, it's definitely the case with the Communist Party in Sweden. Um, they are complete and utter sausage fest. <laughs> same <laughs> here, same here in the Netherlands. Uh, and I think... I mean, there are some women, but it's uh, yeah. a bit of a sausage fest. Uh, I think... In rhetoric, um, the Communist Party has changed a bit since the 70s. And, you know, they talk about equality and I don't think they use the word feminism, but they talk about, you know, ending sexism and having equality between men and women. But they basically don't have any women in the party. Um, And they basically never have, uh, really. It was basically always men. Um... Whereas the left party, which is the, you know, the mainstream socialist party, I think they are, they might actually be majority women. There might actually be more women in that party than men, especially in the youth wing. It's uh, pretty much only women. No, our socialist party, uh, which in parliament, um, it's about, I'd say from when I was still there, it's about roughly 50-50. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the trend all over Europe, really, that it's it's a lot of women are on the, what do you want to call it, like the soft left, like mm-hmm. the between the social democrats and socialists. Yeah, the, the dem uh, socks. And, yeah, exactly. You know, the yeah, eco-feminists those. and the, the eco-socialists and that kind of thing. Exactly. I think there might be some... Uh, <laughs> I think I think the, the rhetoric and the... the uh, the aesthetics of communism appeals probably more same with antifa and anarchism probably appeals more to young men especially angry young white men yeah. than than women because and i can i can imagine that the more pragmatic approach is more appealing to to women uh, and yeah i don't know well, that's probably something to it huh? yeah that's that's been my experience anyway in, in in politics here. That yeah, it's a total, it's like you said, a total sausage fest in the communists. And I mean, the communists are basically non-existent here, but somehow there's still like six to eight communist parties in Denmark. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I know, and they all have hun- like a hundred members. <laughs> wow, it's, it's really sad. Yeah, mm. we have like yeah. three times the population of Denmark. We only have two communist parties. How many do yeah, we have? I mean, uh, let me think. There's this local one. There's the national one. I think there's <laughs> one which split off from that uh, a few years ago. Uh, then there's the Trotskyists, and well, you know how they get. So I feel like the the Trots are their own category. Yeah, I know of <laughs> one of them. Oh wait, I'm, I'm forgetting the Maoist group. So that's at least five uh, communist groups, and that's <laughs> excluding the right. Trotskyist ones. And I don't know how many of those there are, but let's just say like twenty. 20. So I was reading like up on it. Twenty-five anyway. parties, so that's uh, quite a few. Yeah, I was reading up on it, and I'm pretty sure there's at least three tiny uh, Maoist communist parties in Denmark. How? 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 I, t- I. It's so stupid. I mean, really, like it's so dumb that you have three Maoist communist parties. Not even I mean, like a free communist a party yeah. already would have been silly, but fucking free what? Yeah. No, I mean, you just know they had some dumb 
uh, discussion about dialectics one day and uh, said, yeah. I'm forming my own Maoist party. <laughs> and then the new Maoist party had a split about dialectics. Now I'm forming my own Maoist party and this one's going to be the true Maoist party. Yeah. And now there's 10 uh, people scowling at each other from across <laughs> the street. Basically, uh, yeah. I have to say, if anyone has ever seen uh, Life of Brian, that scene where they're yeah. in the uh, arena and they're, you know, the Jadane's peoples from the peoples from the day. Honestly, that feels... Uh, I can't watch that movie anymore because it's just a documentary of how politics works. It's so yeah. interesting. That, <laughs> it's so um, depressing. Monty Everything Python, Brian yeah. does in that film I've done as well, except getting hung on a cross. I, uh, interesting. I seem to recall that Monty Python actually said that they based that scene on uh, Trotskyist parties in the UK. <laughs> that sounds about accurate. It holds up for politics everywhere, I feel. Yeah. I'm not surprised. That does come across like one of those, and especially them yelling splitter at each other. That's such, <laughs> that's yeah. such commun- the, the United Front from, of Judea versus the People's Front of Judea. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's such communist. Uh, I just watched the uh, La Chinois movie uh, yeah. by Godard. That's a, that's that a great movie. That's is, that's a movie about the. Good. Wait, what is, movie was good. that? Uh, what is it about? La Chinois. It's um, it's Jean Luc Godard, who is a, mm. a French movie maker, oui, oui. Movie, super influential from the sixties and seventies, especially. Uh, look him up. Uh, he he made a movie about a young student rebellion uh, group who were Maoists. And um, and their inner workings. He was he was becoming uh, if he wasn't already a fully fledged Marxist at the time. So it does give it this very romantic look and feel. And they're all very beautiful and very young and very sensual. And it's all you know very colorful and and new and interesting. And and they get to, to have all these very like it seems it seems quaint now, but it's French, so you don't notice. It's still just like it just seems foreign. But I imagine if you're a French person, you'd you it would be extremely extremely like um sh- like what what's the word it's not chic it's uh like kitsch <laughs> it would be extremely kitsch i don't even know and, what that means kind of, yeah like quaint or like camp you know okay. like like right, just yeah. like uh uh old-fashioned and a little a little oh, wrong yeah yeah that that kind of feeling but it's it's a really it's a really good movie and it gives a good a good look into into like Maoist politics at the time. It was just before the Student Rebellion of '68 too. It came out the year before. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, that that language they use is so similar to to the language they also use in, in movies like uh, Life of Brian, where they make fun of communists, where they yell revisionist at each other, and, <laughs> and this very <laughs> this very Leninist way of talking. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's the best way of talking, isn't it? <laughs> very direct. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So. Yeah. Um... The feminist split with Marxism uh, and the sausage, sausage, sausage fest that is um, communist parties. Communist parties in you know current the current world. Um, yeah. What else we got? I mean, I guess just like where does it all come from? How, like, why? How does brutalism arise? Mm. Like, if you are a socialist and you are willing to question the existence of capitalism and the the justness of capitalism, and you are willing to question, well, maybe we shouldn't have a state, maybe we shouldn't have money, maybe we shouldn't have classes, but you're not willing to question if maybe we should treat women like equals. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Where does it come from? Peter, you're the philosopher. (laughs) (laughs) Where what do I know? From? I'm just a fucking cultural geographer. I don't know. I mean, my guess is just that they were a reactionary before they were a socialist, then they became a quote-unquote socialist, probably without doing a whole lot of reading, right? Uh, getting involved in some, I mean, some uh, sausage sausage fest of a communist party, uh, <laughs> and they just never had their views challenged properly. But I have seen some brochalists who are like really staunch in their beliefs about women or LGBT hmm. or whatever. Like, they're just really socially conservative. Yeah, I guess um, I would make, like, a right. distinction between those who, like, haven't really uh, re-examined some of their views or had them challenged, and those yeah. who are really, like, doubling down on those views. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many there's so many takes on why exactly it's possible to be a communist who is also very reactionary on the social aspect of of things. You can you can argue that it's a neoliberal phenomena that it's it's a uh, that it's tied to liberalism and and capitalism and the way that that it's it's necessary to reproduce the workforce so women are encouraged to to have children um you can argue that it's a traditional thing um but i like i like to think of it that that it has to do with i think it's possible in politics to compartmentalize certain things like compartmentalize certain issues so if you are say someone who comes from uh, or who gets into communism and wanting to abolish money because you're extremely poor or because you you grew up in a very desperate situation and you uh, you you just want to get rid of money and that's the only issue you care about then i think it's completely possible for you to simultaneously be extremely regressive on social issues so like if that's the one aspect of communism that really got to you and now you're just fighting for that one thing I think it's possible for you to to, to not to, to to not be all in on all the other things and just be extremely regressive on the other hand. Yeah. Um, I guess something we didn't mention is the um, the like anti id poll, anti SJW left, as it's called. Yeah, those right. people. I feel like they're in the same vein as virtualists. Yeah. Um, I'd say so. Basically, they they claim to you know they they hate intersectional feminism, and they don't like identity politics and social justice warriors, um, but they are still left wing, and some say that they are still feminists, just not uh, intersectionary uh, intersectional feminists. I feel like a lot of those also don't really have much of a clue of what these terms mean. I don't think so. No. Yeah, and that's one thing. And I think TERFs also fall into that category. Yeah. The category of people that aren't, that, that still are or consider themselves socialists, but are extremely um, regressive on, on social issues. I mean, you might say TERFs are the original socialists. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't like that one bit. <laughs> but no, yes, you could no, definitely say that. piss them off so much. I'm looking forward to being that's pissed a, off. I mean... If it pisses them off, and then I think... Oh, I'm happy with anything yeah. that pisses them off. <laughs> it might not be you know, accurate, but I don't care. <laughs> the fun are... thing is, when you when you piss off turfs, you get dissertations as comments. That is and, true, that is true. You get these... You get these we, we've discovered so far, you get mountains of, of pages and, and, yeah, <laughs> and, oh, geez, and, and yeah. references and sources to have, why we're have wrong. Have we gotten those? Yeah, yeah. Uh, have, have we, had like, we had like a couple of comments like that, I think. I haven't yeah. read the comments. Not a lot. No, yeah, I've stopped reading them. Probably because of those people. <laughs> oh, interesting. It's just like, I'm not... I, no, I forget what the comment exactly it was, but it's just like, you either have no idea what you're talking about or you're being completely disingenuous, and I'm not bothering anymore. I'm, I'm done. I'm just done. Yeah. And it was from a turf. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think... Uh, I th- I think they're they're being played up, and I think a lot of the a, a lot of a lot of the placed anger at leftists who aren't socially progressive also comes from the U.S. and was a response by a lot of liberals who were angry at people who refused to vote for Hillary and only wanted to vote Democrat if Bernie was the nominee. Yeah. And I think that's kind of trickled out into general political discussions, especially online. Uh, where you it's it's very it, it it doesn't take long for you to be accused to be someone who's regressive on social issues if you if you don't agree with them and i think that that was kind of birthed out of the bernie or bust movement uh, in the i would Democratic say Party. at least like in like your far left circles that's been around for a lot longer than uh bernie oh yeah 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 it has and justly so i would say oh yeah hmm but uh but it's when when a when a concept goes mainstream, it really uh, catches fire. And it w- when the media starts talking about something, it it's it's the Bader Meinhof sin- symptom where once you hear about something, you see it everywhere, and everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you were completely oblivious to it before, but now it's everywhere. Oh yeah. Hmm. Um, I wonder if there's like um, like how there's an um, ANCAP. What is it? Liber- Liber- Libertarian Fascist Pipeline? Hmm. I think it's called. 
Yeah, yeah. Haven't I heard of it. I know that one, yes. Yeah. It's how people uh, go into, like, uh, your libertarian, uh, like Ron Paul, I think, was, and then you'd go from there into, like, Stephen Molyneux, and then eventually you'd go into, like, further, yeah. more racist things. and. Uh, okay, so the, uh, the radicalization process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was this old pipeline back in the day. It's probably changed by now, but there was this thing at the time, I think, 2012. You started with Ron Paul, then we'd go into, like, Stephen Molyneux, and then you end up with some far-right uh, nonsense. Yeah. Right. I think and uh, yeah, neoliberals were also very much to blame for that process because they could only really like they can only react to what's going on on the right, so they can only act in 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 reaction. So we've kind of moved the Overton window on Western liberalism so much these last ten years because there hasn't been any response to it from a, a left wing or progressive or socialist side, really, especially within America. Within America, it's all just been like no. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't use those words. No, <laughs> it hasn't been very. It's it's been it's been very depressing in the U.S. Especially as as things have gone from Ron Paul to to the Steve Kings and open fascists in uh, local politics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do wonder if, in the same way that there is a libertarian fascist pipeline, that there is a brochialist to. Or like an anti id poll to brochialist to like NAS ball to Strasserist pipeline. Oh, I'm sure there is. That would be interesting, yeah. I'm absolutely sure there is. Isn't there, there's this one guy called the Amazing Atheist. I'm sure he's on that pipeline somewhere. <laughs> um, I'm sure Maybe. he used to be. I, I, I'll... I haven't watched him since 2014, more or less, but... Uh, he uploaded a video. Day, yeah. Definitely, yes. He uploaded a video recently about Bernie and it was it's one of the funniest YouTube videos I've ever seen because he's 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 this very very YouTube guy I want to say like not popular YouTube but like someone who has like a thousand subscribers and thinks he's super cool but anyway he, he uploaded a video of him with like face makeup on and and he had a cigarette in his hands and he he started and he was just kind of like looking cool in front of the camera and and turning on the cigarette and saying my wife told me i can't smoke inside but too bad she shouldn't have gone to work then and then he like continues to smoke as he talks about how bernie's cool and like but but he uses <laughs> it's just this this very impotent gesture of, of being <laughs> like yeah my wife can't tell me what to do when she's not at home man it's like I think I think that's that's de that kind of attitude is definitely a part of the pipeline to brochialism. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's it's so it's like the Ben Shapiro style uh, edginess, I, which I is just depressing. That video, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's it's really it's I I recommend everyone watch it and then at at the same time that no one watches it. <laughs> <laughs> it has no value, but I just had a good laugh over it. Uh, sounds beautiful. <laughs> I guess I should ask the um, the question that has any you know doesn't really have an answer. What exactly should we be doing uh, about brutalism and about sexism within the socialist movement? Oh, that's Other a good than, question. I guess uh, challenge their views, which I feel like we should do, regardless. Yeah, but. Uh, well, at least give them the tiniest bit of credit I guess in some way in that um, a lot of like the sort of liberal shenanigans that go on have no, uh, they, they might talk about you know race and gender and whatnot and sexuality but no mention of class fucking ever and yeah. I will really mm. grant them that it's like yeah no I fucking can't forget about class that's a pretty fucking important thing but at the same mm. time it's not the only thing it's, uh, there's more. Are like uh, the mirror version of liberals. Yes, I suppose, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let, let's get your, you know, ah, God, what's his face? Ah, it's embarrassing. Uh, your, your thesis, anti-thesis, synthesis guy. Hegel. Yeah. Hegel. There Hegel. you go. Come on, let's get a bit Hegelian here and you know merge these two <laughs> and something which actually works. Come on. Yeah, it's you brought up something interesting, and that is that they just they they react to like they're the the mirror versions of liberals. So like liberals are completely stuck because they they ultimately don't really have any morals or any ideas exactly. of their own. They always <laughs> just react to what the conservatives are doing and and oppose yeah. it. And ultimately, without the liberals, there wouldn't be any like 
uh, anti-SJW crowd tearing them apart. So it all just becomes this mirror on top of a mirror on top of a mirror thing where nothing happens, but we're all discussing something. And it, it's always the the agenda is always set by the the, the right wingers who who actually like just enjoy pissing people off. So I mean it's not it's not constructive what's coming from that side, but we're all just reacting. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Which is kind of depressing somewhere. Yeah. So I think I think like like most most things uh, that I conclude is I think we need a, a leftist voice. In America, in, in in politics everywhere, not just America. Uh, I, I'm focusing on America because that's kind of where, like, they export their culture to everywhere else. Yeah. So I feel like we have to be held responsible for their actions <laughs> all the time politically. Yeah. yeah um, that. <clears throat> so yeah, I think I think we just we need a real leftist response to it. Someone who actually talks up about t- talks about these ideals and suggests legislation and and talks about like what the, the real beneficial things for for women could be and for women's groups and that we create this Bernie not the, not the Sanders <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ironically probably yes yeah. <laughs> he's probably the most I mean, famous you know, AOC because, in a few years yeah I was also thinking about AOC but uh, I, I think it's interesting I wonder if Bernie can actually ever be the voice of left wing feminism because yeah. he has gotten this like the media has you know painted him as this like old dude who's not very hip and doesn't really understand and his policies are all from the 70s mm. um even though i mean he is very progressive uh, oh yeah um i think it can be of you no know, left-wing feminism sure but not of liberal feminism no sure yeah i don't think so um, I guess that's arguably a bit of a disadvantage uh, for him because, uh, yeah, they just want a woman and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, interestingly, a lot of the criticism for Bernie's politics about women comes from the left and comes from liberals as well. So you're right. He's not He's not going to be the... He's, he's, he's not going to represent a lot of the people in that group, I think, just for the sole reason that he's an old white guy. But I yeah. think his politics could actually end up helping them much more than if they elect someone like Kamala Harris, who is just soulless and like doesn't have any uh, proposals or policies that would actually advance the causes that uh, concern women. I mean, yeah. I'd argue that Bernie <clears throat> was better on women's rights than Hillary was. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I know, like, well, actually, no, no, we don't have any fucking Hillary supporters in this audience, but if we did, I'm sure they would come back, well, hang on, fucking Hillary had the fucking same votes. Like, yeah, but the rhetoric is different. She did not just embrace these fucking positions. She was like, well, you know, if we have to. It's like very mm. much ceding a lot of ground to the right that this is actually not good stuff. It's been but again, she position was- for decades. You're so right. And and again, it's that thing, like with the it's it's that neoliberal thing where they just react to what's going on. So she was reacting to what Bernie was saying and incorporating his messages. But I I think a lot of the people who supported Bernie accurately looked at that and said, But she's just gonna do the same thing when she gets into office with the conservatives. So all of these things where she's now she's fighting Bernie, so she's adopting his politics, but when she's fighting uh Trump uh, no one knew that it was Trump most of the time that, that that was happening. But now that he's but but in like when she's fighting the Republican, she's just gonna. Uh, she has put her right? own spin. since uh, Trump's been in office. She's like been going to Europe and being like, "Nah, you guys need to embrace like these fascist parties and their immigration policies because otherwise it's gonna piss them off." Like exactly, yeah, and that's that's the what at the, what that's what's at the heart of the neoliberal, and I think that's why you see so many neoliberal candidates talking up Medicare for all right now and and talking up all these these things that Bernie says because Bernie's the front runner so they respond to his politics and then put their own spin on it like that guy who just announced Swalwell or what <laughs> who <laughs> the what? guy who announced yesterday or the day before I have another one oh, running yeah. now Jesus yeah. fuck 20, 20 candidates now we oh. should do we should do an episode we're going to do we... a special <laughs> episode where we go through all of these candidates I thought you yeah. were about to say we should all run <laughs> We should run. <laughs> <laughs> we should sign up as candidates. <laughs> I mean, why not? Uh, Everyone yes, else is doing yes. it. Fuck it, yeah. What do we have to lose? 
Might I support well. Matt Christman for president. Nah, fuck it. I'm going <laughs> to be running. Chapa. Fuck it, yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, let's fuck do it. Yeah. Why not? But there's 20 candidates now. I think uh, it would be, wouldn't it be fun next, next week or something if we play a game where I, I say a name and you have to guess uh what they stand for or what makes them like what, oh, what makes them want to run for president you because say, there's 20 you candidates now uh, i assume like we're a, not allowed to cheat by you know looking up all these candidates <laughs> beforehand <laughs> <laughs> i mean oh, i should i should have waited to spring this on you uh, what would, it be, yeah, what would like, be funny fuck. is if you had you had a list of like 10 uh well i get 20 of the the candidates and then 20 just completely random randomly generated <laughs> names <laughs> Like John Smith or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You give us names and we have to guess if they're real candidates or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can do that right now. Sure. Um, yeah. Fuck it. Mike Messam. Okay. Is that a real name or is that a joke name? Mm. Uh, what is he running for? Uh, President. I mean, what's he running on, rather? <laughs> what's his platform? His legs. Ooh. <laughs> what Fuck is he? Oh. Um, Mike Messam. Okay. Okay. Mm. That sounds fake. Uh, I, w- I want to say I want to say skin color, but that would be uh, I mean probably white. It sounds like a very white name. He's he's black. Ah oh, fuck. Yeah. Do you think he's real or <laughs> did I make him up? Uh, I'm gonna guess makeup. Uh, I'm gonna guess you made him up. He is real. What? Who the fuck is this guy? Oh oh no no no. He's I I made him up, but his he does exist. His, <laughs> his name his first name is just Wayne, so he's Wayne Messam. Oh okay. Uh. Why'd you oh. come with Mike then? Uh, just to throw you off, no, I guess. No. If you, yeah. <laughs> Wayne messed me up. That guy, yeah, totally. Fucking <laughs> dude from Connecticut. Uh, Florida, I think. Damn. <laughs> okay, another another one. Uh, Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson. That sounds like the most generic name ever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I have not heard any Marianne Williamson's in the race. So no. Far. Can't I, I blame feel you. like that name would probably be mentioned because that sounds like a woman's name, and I'm going to guess that would have gotten a bit of attention. Hmm. Uh, so. I'm going to say fake. Yeah. She's real. She's is she been running? endorsed by. She is. What? She's real. Fuck. And uh, she's been endorsed by. The f- 90s pop group, folk pop group. Fuck, I can't remember the <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, she she Good she had a she had a tour where she talked about uh, personal and national re- renewal called the Love America tour, which I'm convinced mm. is just a publicity tour. That sounds like a publicity yeah. tour. Yes. So one of those Trump is so mean. Okay, tours, so you know? what's the platform? <laughs> Wait, what was the name again? Marianne something? Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson. Okay, Wikipedia. She has not been in the in the media a lot. Ah, well. Oh. Okay, good. <clears throat> she does have a wiki page. She's yeah. an author. <laughs> well, look at that. She does have a wiki page. <laughs> it would be funny if she didn't. <laughs> I don't know. It could be she didn't. Okay. Like, okay. You go on the on the Wikipedia page for the list of Democratic candidates, and like half the names are red because they don't have a page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should oh, just okay. add our own names in. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. There's okay, some like one... a joint ticket, you know. Here, here's another one. Okay, are you ready? John mm. Hickenlooper. <laughs> yes, that, that's real. That's real. I've heard that name before. I, I, yep, that's totally yes. Hickenlooper. Yes. Uh, John Hickenlooper. Yep, John Hickenlooper. I, I think he's <laughs> I, I think he's gone on board with the Medicare for All thing. I'm not sure. He is, I think so. he is he is in fact real. Yes. Yes. Uh, well. And uh I I have no I have to be honest, I've never heard of this guy. Yeah, so John I, I will believe it. Hickenlooper. That's hilarious. Looper. Okay, let, let's see what what's his platform. I have to know this now. He has a Wikipedia page. It's good. Um Apparently good, he was good, governor good. of Colorado at one point. Good on him. Yeah. Um, oh, his wiki, his, 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 he has his own wiki page for his plat- uh, no, for his uh, race in 2020. Nothing, there's nothing on there, though. It just says that he's announced and he raised a bit of money. Oh, and his <laughs> logo is on there, which is Hickenlooper 2020. Man, President Hickenlooper. Yeah. President Hicks. Hicks and Loops. 
Hicks oh and God. loops. Yeah. Hicks and loops all day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's no mention of his politics or platform on his own. Why would page. there be? Uh, yeah. Why would there um, be? I mean, <laughs> this is uh, just a money grab, uh, folks. Wait, hang on. And 2011 maybe. No, no, it does not even... No, I was wrong, he has not endorsed Medicare for all. Never mind. I mean, there's still a good dozen people who might run for president still, so... Oh, yeah, hey, John Biden. Strap Joe in, folks. Biden. Uncle Stacey Joe. Stacey Abrams. Yeah, uh, we have a Stacey, lot of people. Yeah. I don't think Stacey Abrams is going to run. No, I mean, that would be... And I mean, again, what's the downside of running for president That's now, anyway? fair, yeah. I mean, you just get a bunch of publicity, and you can always just drop mm. out when you've had enough. I mean, you just, just look at Michael money, Bell. But, uh, oh yeah, Michael Bell, he's great. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Go like check out his Twitter account. Old. He's great. Everyone follow Mike Ravel's Twitter account. Yeah, it's that glorious. Is, that, is, that is fucking fantastic. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't uh, think he knows what Twitter is. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, obviously not. I mean, check out the fucking Trotsky's running that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. Tankies. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for <laughs> listening, everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. I hope you enjoyed this great episode, people. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for listening, and see you next week or whenever. Yes. Also, send us more emails. What is it Shishek says? See you either under communism or in hell. <laughs> yeah, remember yes, the emails, thanks. people. Shitislandshow at gmail.com. Send us more. That's oh, yeah. true. Email us. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.